So here we are at Gentiana Nursery and we're taking a look at the perennial border and Craig Wilson's going to show us some of the plants in here and talk about the structure of the border itself. So this is a border that you rejuvenated about two years ago? That's right, I pulled out 95% of it, so pretty much emptied it and replanted it. And you rejuvenated the soil as well? About 200 kilos of um, organic life, Campbell's organic life, and the same of dolomite. So that's a slow release type organic fertiliser? It's, it's, look, it's much the same as dynamic lifter, but I think with different things in it. Right. Yeah. Well, let's have a look at a few of the plants. What have we got here? That's Aster Violetta. Quite tall growing? Look, yeah, well, I think maybe the fertiliser might have something to do with that. Right, so it's, it's really lifted up. And this comes in a few... The, this the Astas, well, look, they're not Aster anymore. They've had a name change, but uh, I'll call them Aster. So this one? Aster Bars Pink. Okay, so that's quite an attractive one as well. Yeah. If we look sort of lower down, we've got the ground cover here. Yeah, that's Catman and Peter. And next to it? Geranium and Canum, Helichrysum species. Right, so that, yeah. that does flower? It does, but the, the, the flowers are not particularly attractive. You'd cut it back when it flowers. So it's sort of grown for the grey foliage. Yeah. And this variegated? Caryopteris, Flandonensis variegata, I guess. So it's just finished flowering. The foliage adds quite a lift, doesn't it? That's right, yeah. And it's fully deciduous. And we've got this white flowering plant in the background over here. Aster uh, summer snow. Summer snow. Autumn snow, something like that. Fairly chrysum. And again, it's that's a real, really a foliage plant. Absolutely. The little red flowering plant in there is Lychnus chalcedonica. Okay, that's quite a nice one. It's a good, strong colour. It is. It really adds a lift. And yeah. there's blue behind it. Self-sown love in the mist. Nigella. The Bit weedy, really. Well, you can fill in gaps, yeah. The euphorbia, yeah. Um, Coloroides, I think. Again, self-seeds everywhere. But still, it adds that, that colour adds a bit of a lift. For a it? long time, yeah. Yeah. Geranium sea spray. And that's so it's one of the New Zealanders. Fairly hardy sort of a plant. Seems to be. Do you water this border much at all? It's got it's got um, a drip system under the ground, and I use it to the barest minimum. And we've got some grasses in here. Penicetum oriental. And the taller one behind us? Is Stipa gigantea. And then we move across to this one here. Uh, Miscanthus Kleinfontaine. And you've got a few of those to add a bit of structure That's along, right. along the spine. Potophyllum Spotty Dotty? Disosma nowadays, yeah, Spotty Dotty. Nothing like a name change. No, it's constant. Aster Lady in Black. That's quite a nice plant, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's, good, it's a good performer. In winter, you prune this back? It's cut to the ground. So basically, almost the whole border's yep. just taken right back? Yep. The yellow flowering plant? Ra Rudbeckia laciniata, I think. And that adds a bit of height and certainly yeah. a splash of colour and the bees seem to love it. It's geranium Philippe Vapel. That's nice. Good, good front of border. Nice low growing plant and it yeah. looks like it's fairly free flowering as well. Uh, Nautia Macedonica that's reverted to mauve. It's normally this colour. Okay, so that's... It's self seeds and you get the odd mauve one. Aster Silver Spray, which needs a bit more sun. Dark leafed form of geranium protense. I don't recall its name. And that grows well in part shade? Yeah. You need a bit of sun to get the colour on the leaf. And next to it? Is geranium phaeum. And again, it's a sort of really good foliage plant. Yeah, but it's also a good bit of flowers. And here the... Uh... Formium cream delight. I've tried every formium in the book and this is the one I love. It's just terrific. It doesn't get too big. It's good flowerer. Yeah, it's quite an attractive plant. And yep. behind you've got some cannas, are they? Uh, ginger. They're ginger. Hedicium green eye. Okay, so it's got the interesting sort of colour on the reverse. Yeah, and orange flowers any day. Fuchsia baccalaris. And this one here is Brunnera macrophylla, which makes a great little foliage plant. The white flowering plant in here. Oh, a double white wind flower. Hellebores as ground covers. Yep. And this part of the border up here which receives a lot of shade is the home of the uh, 
cyclum and hedrofolium. So we're gradually making a carpet that will go all the way down to the gum tree. And these are self-seeding or? Uh, yeah, they're self-seeding. Uh, people look at them and think, you know, gee, you've got a lot, but it takes a long time for that to happen. Yeah. This is the big deities, the Etes robinsoniana from Norfolk Island. So it has uh, big, tall white flowers in the spring. So that adds a bit of structure. Yeah, that's right, it. yeah. Do you cut this one back? No, that's yeah. Myrtia sinclairii. Great a pooker from New Zealand, so it'll grow into a small tree. And you can prune this one back fairly easily? Yep, it's Piper excelsa. It's another New Zealander, a uh, common name Kawakawa, and it's a medicinal plant. So these ones are different forms of Prunus glandulosa, so they flower on bare stems in the winter. Oh, sorry, spring. After they flower, you cut them back really low. Right. So there's single pink, double pink, single white, double white. Uh, Cornus pumula. That's the low growing one. Yeah, and I, look, I don't see any advantage or reason to grow it, quite frankly. <laughs> well, in that case, we uh, won't recommend it. Yeah, and see the Munstead Red. And behind it is Echinops Rytro, and it's a hybrid. It's a bit smaller and darker than the species. But the bees seem to love that one. Yep, it's Echinops Rytro, so it's the species that the one we looked at earlier is hybridised from. Salvia finagrove at the back, which I really like. It's it's a good compact salvia. Flowers for a long time. Pollinators like it. And here we've got Aster fricatii. So the grasses are in the centre of the border to add a sort of spine down yeah, the centre? Yeah, well it sort of gives me a... that I can plant on either side of them because it's a really deep border so that you can bring it down. So it sort of divides it in two. And this grass, it's sort of decided to lie down on us? It has, that's Carex testacea, the orange Carex. And do you prune that one back yeah, as well? Yeah, in the springtime you can cut it to the ground. Yeah, that's a good shot of the ginger. Yeah, it looks really good. And yeah. You can their flowers just forming on the top now. Yeah. And the plant in front of it's Beshan area, which just sort of gives you a bit of guts. Uh, Aconitum henryi, monk's hood. That's for difficult mother-in-laws. It's one of the most toxic plants on earth. That's Plectranthus zuluensis. This one again? Klein Fontaine. So it's Miscanthus Klein Fontaine. So like the formiums, you know, I've tried every miscanthus in the book and that one I like because the clumps don't fall open when it gets older. And it's got a sort of that central stripe down the leaf. That's right. As well, which adds a bit of contrast. Yeah. And again, cut it back in winter? Uh, look, I tend to leave it till the spring because the, the dead foliage can be quite handsome. But yeah, it needs to be cut to the ground at some stage over the cooler months. And here we're looking at a totally different border. What have we got here? That's Berberus' little favourite. So and it's a small berberus and I cut it to keep it that compact. And behind it we've Behind got it is Buxus emerald pillar or Graham blandy, you know, the fastigit Buxus. And in between? Rosemary, really fine form, not sure what its name is. And again the cyclamen yeah. under, under planting. Yep, they seem to like root competition. So it's really about choosing the right plant for the right part, part of the border? Of course. So this is receiving a lot of sun? Yep, all day. Whereas parts of the other border? Are quite shaded, that's right. And what would be your top tips for starting off a border? Get like the soil one? right. Heaps of humus, heaps of fertiliser, and then heaps of mulch after you've planted it. And then uh, it takes care of itself, except for that winter prune. Yeah. You planted quite densely here. Yeah, not densely enough. You'd go denser? <laughs> yeah. You need to pack them in. And that cuts back on the weeds as That's well? That's right, yeah. And they, they, then they support each other. And, yeah. The asters are a bit of a bee magnet. They are. The Which, pollinators love them. And that's great for any garden. That's right. Great for all of us. We'd like to thank Craig Wilson from Gentiana Nursery for taking us on a tour of his garden border. Subscribe to the YouTube channel for regular updates on a whole range of plants. And as always, good luck with your gardening.